Cricket. Welcome to Rise Above. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. So we are in your home. For right now. For right now, temporarily. Yeah. You want to tell tell our audience where, you, where you're staying right now? Uh, I'm at the Rutherford County Correctional Work Center. Uh, I'm serving an eight-year sentence uh, for sale, manufacturing, deliver, Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 narcotics. And you are where in your eight-year sentence? I'm um, two years in. I got six years left on an eight. Okay. And were you, have you been in here f- for two years? Uh, no, I've, I've got a little bit of time served before before they told me to flat my time, but I've got two years done done on the eight. So okay. I've been I've been incarcerated 90 days now. Okay. And how how old are you now? I'm 42 years old. 42. How many is this your first time in no, sir. Correctional facility? I've been in and out of jail most of my life uh, for 25 years. I've probably gave the state of Tennessee 13 years of my life, maybe 13, 14 years. What was the worst prison you were in? Uh, South Central. Where's that in regards to here? Uh, south, 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 South Central from here. Okay. Uh, Harmon County, uh, Bledsoe, uh, Okay. Got it. Got it. So where do you grew up in this area? Yes, sir. I'm born and bred in Murfreesboro. Okay. What was childhood like? Uh, childhood was, uh, it was decent after my mom left my father. He was, uh, an alcoholic abusive father. So, um, it's kind of like a subject to everything that we're, we're told not to do these days was okay. You know, we wasn't told any different. So it was, a uh, it was a ride. Yeah. Did you have any siblings? Uh, yes, I do. I got a younger sister. Is she, um, did she, has she been in and out of the system or is she? Uh, she got in a little trouble a few years, uh, about six, about six, seven years back. Okay. Um, she did her time. She's a, she's a recovering addict herself. So she's been clean seven years now almost. Oh, wow. Yes. Are you in sobriety now? Uh, yes, sir. How much time do you have? Uh, 90 days. Good for you, yeah. man. 90 days is amazing. Yeah. One day is amazing. Even, even if it's forced, it's good. You know? Yeah. I mean, you can use in correctional facilities yeah. if you want to. Yeah. I wouldn't if I could. <laughs> yeah. I commend you. Yeah. Um, what was elementary? Did you go to middle school? Did you go to high school? Walk us through that. Uh, I went, I went to school all the way up to about the eighth grade and by, by high school, I got, uh, involved in gangs and guns and drugs and, you know, uh, the wrong kind of women and, uh, just kind of spiraled down from there. I was put in a group home at the age of 16 years old, uh, served a determinate sentence in Taft until I was 19, um, uh, was re- re- released. And, uh, after I was released, I just kind of hit the streets running, you know, um, uh, you know, doing, doing juvenile time back then ain't like doing juvenile time today. They didn't have the compassion they have today for the, the kids they got today, you know. What did you do to go into that facility at 16? Uh, armed robbery and uh, uh, aggravated uh, aggravated burglaries. Uh, three counts of aggravated burglary, two armed robberies. Uh, okay. Robbing, robbing cab drivers across Murfreesboro. How did you learn how to do that? Just the people you were hanging out with and the people you were associating with at the time? Yeah, just the, just the people that you end up with, <laughs> you yeah. know. You know, like you could call them friends, but you know, then I don't guess they are friends if they're teaching you how to do things like that. You know, with your father um, and the way he was treating you and your sister, for you, was it an escape leaving the house? And did you feel that family camaraderie? Well, with- it, it, it really wasn't how he treated me and my sister. It was how he treated my mother. Yeah, you know, you know, so. It was to try to escape, but you can't escape and leave the ones you love, you know, because once I become old enough to to run away, I didn't, you know, we was already, you know, uh, trying to take care of her, you know. Um, Yeah. Did you feel a sense of a family camaraderie with gangs that you were running with and people you were hanging out with at a young age? I did. But, you know, uh, when I started doing the things I was doing, uh, my family kind of turned their back on me, uh, kind of left me to it. You know, I can't blame them for it, but, you know, I kind of growed up on my own in the wrong kind of way, you know. I always hit the wall head first. 
How old were you when you started using substances? Maybe 14, 13, 14 years old. What was the first drug you tried? Cocaine. That was the first one that you tried? The very first one. Wow. <laughs> well, alcohol was the first, but as far as drug substance, you know, drugs, it was cocaine. Everyone always says weed. I didn't. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't really like weed that much, you know. I didn't like to go down. I like to go up. <laughs> what did it feel like for you that first? Do you remember that high? Do you remember that day? Uh, I felt like I didn't have to hide anymore or repress anything that I could be. I felt like that I could be myself more if I was high, you know. It gave me an outlet, you know, like. Yeah, it was it was an escape from what was going on inside your head and yeah. at home. And yeah, that's. Um, and then what did the progression look like? Obviously, at 16, you ended up going away. Were those burglary, aggravated burglaries to get money for drugs? Uh, mo uh, well, more or less, they was to really to, it was more like peer pressure, you know, at first. And then, you know, cause back when we was growing up, it really wasn't meth and heroin and all the other stuff, you know, it was just alcohol, weed, and a little bit of Coke here and there, you know, it was kind of, kind of manageable, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, I just didn't have a, I didn't have a, I didn't like authority. I didn't like to be told what to do. Uh, and every time somebody tried to tell me what to do, I do the complete opposite. Mm. You know, I'd, um, and I don't know why. I guess it's lack of lack of guidance, or yeah, not that my mama didn't try. She's, she's a good lady. You know, worked hard to try to take care of me and my sisters. Uh, um, and I don't know. Uh, I just don't. You know, you don't ever know what goes wrong. So you don't know what to fix. Did you? You felt like. Did you feel like you had to prove yourself to that gang and the older people that you were hanging out with? Well, of course, you always got to prove yourself to every gang, you know. Yeah, but once you, when you know, once you get to a point to where you're known, who everybody knows who you are, it's uh, you don't want to be known anymore. You know, you don't want the notoriety anymore. You, you know, yeah. I mean, it's good people know you where you go, but it's like sometimes you get sick of oh, that's cricket, that's cricket, that's cricket. You mm -hmm. know. It's, that's not a, always a good thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Recognized for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons. Yeah. What did your 20s look like? Uh, my 20s, uh, I tried to, I got more involved in drugs. Uh, I had kids. Uh, I had my first first kid when I was 23. Uh, and she kind of, you know, she kind of slowed me down a lot. She made me think about things. Uh I thought it was going to change my life forever, you know, but, you know, uh, my baby mama got pregnant a, a few months after that with my son. And it was like, well, okay, uh, they're safe. They're taken care of. They, they got a place so I can go do what I want to now, you know? So I went back out there and I thought what I was doing by selling drugs is taking care of my family to, you know, cause I didn't have any kind of traits at the time, you know, um, so the street life was a way to take care of my family and me taking care of my family was an excuse for me to keep living the life that I eventually ended up, uh, I guess you could say, uh, like light or like being, you know, whatever you want to call it. Fast life. Well, I become accustomed to it, you know, and um, I kind of, I liked it. You know, it wasn't that I didn't like it. I knew it was wrong, but you know, I didn't know I was broken either. Yeah. So you have your first child, your daughter at 23, a few, little while after having your daughter, you have your son. Yeah. When is the next time you go back to prison? Well, the next time I go back to prison, uh, well, I've been in and out of here since 2002. So, you know, catching misdemeanors here, misdemeanors there. Uh, and you're violating and getting sent back. Is yeah, that I call, okay? I caught uh, some big boy felony charges in 2013 and uh, 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 served served five years for aggravated bur uh, aggravated burglary, theft over 250,000, um, and served five years then. Okay. Are you in touch with your children? Uh, yes, my, my children uh, currently reside with my sister, my little sister. Um, 
I stay in touch with her every week. Uh, my kids are grown now. You know, they're 18 and 19 years old. So, How are they? Did they go to high school? And uh, they, Yeah, my daughter just graduated high school. My son's in the process of graduating. But, uh, you know, I guess the lack of me, uh, you know, me being selfish most of my life and keep doing this crazy, this crazy crap. No, it's, it's the lack of me not being there. Um, they're falling down the wrong, you know, they're falling down the wrong path too, you know, because I'm not there to, you know. Yeah, they're kind of left to their own, you know, to, to make their own choices. And, you know, if you're letting a, a 15 and a 16 year old, 17 year old kid make their own choices, they're not always going to make the right ones. You know, yeah, they need guidance. Yeah. What is so your children are now they've graduated high school or well, your son is about to graduate high school. When is there is there mom around as at this time as well or uh no their their mom is uh currently in san antonio texas from a car wreck uh, she suffered a car wreck not too long ago and uh she's laying in, uh, she's in a hospital right now uh <sighs> with half of her like half of her skull missing saying if that she if she if she pulls through it then she's gonna have to wear a helmet for the rest of her life but, <sighs> her family's not trying to contact them or anything like that. So Mm. they won't let my family know anything unless my kids call them. My kids are so, they're so bitter with her that they don't want to, you know, they kind of forgot about their mom. She's been gone for a long time. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Now, are your parents still alive to this day? Uh, My mother is. My father just passed. uh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's okay. Um, what has been the relationship with your mother and even your father up until, you know, my father's not really been there most of my life, you know, and, and, you know, the times that he was there, um, you know, he's, he's always been a good friend and he's been good to his friends, but he, he never was a father figure type, you know, uh, he always okayed for us to be, uh, doing drugs and running around, you know, kind of let us do what we wanted to do. What well, the little bit of times we did see him, uh, my mother, she's been, she's just been doing a lot of praying for me, mm. trying everything that she can. You know, she sounds like a, a great lady. Yeah, she's a wonderful lady. Mm. She's been on the receiving end of you know and, some, and she still puts up with my shit. That's you know, it's what mamas are supposed to do, ain't they? Yeah. So you're 90 days sober today, yes, and sir. what's changed? What changed this time? I mean, mentally I've changed, you know, mentally I changed a long time ago. Um, I'm just battling, I'm battling this addiction, man. You know, it's like, it's like I got to get something in, in, in place of all, all the negativity that that's took place in my life. Um, I don't know. I just don't know how to fix what's broken. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This, I know that I'm broken, you know, but I don't know, you know, just looking for something, any, anything to, to hold on to, you know, to, to keep the hope, you know? Yeah. Have you ever had sobriety time in the past? Very, yeah. Yeah. Very little, uh, outside of, outside of being incarcerated. Uh, you know, this is sobriety time too. You know, I'm counting this sobriety time. hundred percent. Right. But, uh, uh, in the past, just very little, uh, I've never actually, but one time ever tried to take the initiative to say, Hey, I need to go get help and, you know, walk up here and go to this place. Uh, I just got out of English, English mountain back in January of this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, first time I ever, uh, voluntarily walked into a treatment center by myself. So that was a win that, you know, yeah. But it's hard. It's it's hard to admit when you're wrong when you know you've been doing what you want to for so long. You know, I've never been, been I've never been a disrespectful person to anybody, but to myself. Yeah. You know, I'm my own worst enemy most of the time. It's funny. I met you out there a little while ago. I mean, you have face tattoos, yes. neck tattoos. You no, know, to your average person, that's that's an intimidating look. Yeah. And 
I, you looked at me like we walked in, JD and I, you looked at us, that smile that you're yeah. smiling, like that's yeah, yeah. how you approached us. And I'm yeah. like, he's a good dude. Yeah. And I started to talk to you and, you know, we're good people. Right. We're good people. It, you know, listen, I don't- Some of the best people. Some of the best people, most talented people, best work ethic, and we get in our own way. And yeah. you said before, I'm a broken person. I am going to challenge that. We are, I would say you have your shit. We all have our shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, some have different resources to deal with that shit. And some don't. Yeah. I think, you know, have you ever been to like a self-help program or... Have you ever been to meetings that are about addiction and sobriety before? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I've been. I've I've, I've went to AA meetings, uh, NA meetings. Uh, I'm involved with the reentry team now. Uh, Here, yeah. Every twice Amazing. a week, twice a week. Uh, I go to everything that's like self help or self improvement that I can. You know, um, I'm uh, currently enrolled in the Megatronics class, trying to get certified in manufacturing technician and the TCAT. The, being certified in construction and electrical so i'm doing everything that i can to to stay positive and, and hope for the best outcome you know um it's funny it's just, we're so so i'm so used to you know failing or you know that it's that it's that it's a it's an in-between thing you know it's an in-between feeling i don't know how to sometimes i don't know how to process things you know Sitting in purgatory, not right, knowing right, if right, you're going right. to heaven or hell. Because right, right, right. <laughs> right. it's, it's a thin line between doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing. You know? there, there, there is. And then once, if you've done the wrong thing many times. It makes it easier. It yeah. makes it easier to fall that way. Right, right. The line becomes thinner and thinner. Right. We were, I was talking to William before, um, at the warden here for the listeners. And the he was- guy, One of the best guys you ever meet. He was yeah. telling us- about who you really are as a person. Yeah. They know me. They've seen me grow up, you know, which is not a good thing. No. But it's not also a bad thing because, right. you know, at least it, uh, in an environment where people, they they respect each other and respect goes a long way, you know. Um, and then when you've known somebody for 20 years, they become like family, no matter what side of the fence they're, they're on. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And he, the, the, some of the best people you'll meet here, they, you know, they care. They he, care. He didn't refer to you as an inmate. He referred to you by your name yeah. and talked about your character and who you are as a person and how much you help out here, how respectful you are. And I saw it too in the big room before when yes. we were in there. And, um, you know, I, I can relate to being derailed by substances and alcohol. Right. And wanting to be that father, wanting to be a significant, uh, you know, right. significant other to my my wife or whatever it is, or, you know, just do the right thing. And I couldn't because the drugs and alcohol, I was, I sabotaged myself right. over and over again. Yeah. And I would get a case of the fuck it. And I would always right. say, fuck it. I can just do this one time. Yeah. No one will know, and then tomorrow's a new day, and I'll just stop again tomorrow. That's how it starts, you know. The case of the fuckets is a bad case of anything. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's crazy, but it's crazy how your mind warps you right. into that thinking. If you hook me up to a lie detector test, and I said I'm going to quit, I'm only going to use one day, I would pass that lie detector test, yeah. and then you wake up and you don't have a choice. Yeah. You know, oh, we've lied so much in our life that we could pass a lie detector test. It's like, oh. Manipulation is part of the lifestyle, you know. Yeah. That's part of that we gotta let go, you know. I guess like uh J D was saying, he was saying that uh uh you know, you always do the next right right thing, like, you know. It's, it's about it's about the gist of it, you know. I'm always looking for somebody to help out or somebody to give good advice to, even if I'm not taking my own advice. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a start, you know. Yeah. What piece of advice would you have for the listener or viewer that was in your position at 16 years old or even 14 when you first started, you know, you tried drugs and you were, um, you 
got introduced to street life. What piece of advice would you have for that person? Uh, just say no. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just say no. And, uh, man, just keep your head up. Just always keep your head up and, you know, keep making sure that your, your knees don't get lazy praying to God, you know? Has God been a huge tool for you? It has. Over the years and especially it, the last 90 days? It has. Sometimes it's the only tool that I got, you know? Yeah. You know? Well, Cricket, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home today. No, thank you, man. And uh, just, I, just my home for now. For now, for <laughs> now. Well, thank you, buddy. Yes, sir. All right.